two were in it, I apologize. That's okay. Well, very long day, so I, you were here earlier, actually, weren't you? I was. Yeah. It's been you a long day here as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. My name is Sue Wernett, and I'm a resident of Bartlett. And I am here today representing the 23 members of the Carroll County Republican <coughs> Committee to express our support for HCR 6. We agree that, as stated in Article 7 to our state constitution, the people of this state have the sole and exclusive right of governing themselves as a free, sovereign, and independent state, and do and forever hereafter shall exercise and enjoy every power, jurisdiction, and right pertaining thereto, which is not or may not hereafter be by them expressly delegated to the United States of America. It's the sense of our, uh, our committee that in its thrust, this resolution is no more than a recapitulation of the principles enshrined in the Constitution under which the people of New Hampshire agreed to be bound in union with co-states. Unfortunately, that which should, as a matter of course, be able to go unsaid, all too often goes unhonored instead. This resolution would serve as both a rebuke and a renewed commitment. And we urge its passage and broad dissemination. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Warner. Any questions from the committee? Thank you very much for testimony. Pastor Garrett Lear, please. Not many times in a person's life do they get to have the opportunity for something as important as this. My name is Garrett Lear. I represent the Well of Living Water Christian Fellowship and Ministries and the Patriot Pastor, the Heroes of American <coughs> Liberty. I am a direct descendant of those that fought for liberty and freedom for the Republic and founded this Republic. I stand in great respect for HCR 6 and endorse its passage. Uh, I want to draw to your attention a couple of points of history that I think are worth looking at. First of all, even though this bill is called Jeffersonian Principles, many of us who are not Southerners, and I am through and through a New Englander, born in New England, raised right here in New Hampshire, and uh, I have to confess a little bit, I was raised in Massachusetts, I was actually born there. I hope you'll forgive me for that. <laughs> 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 That's okay, we're not in New Hampshire. We'll give, we'll give you a pass on that one. <laughs> I appreciate that. That the principles that are talked about here are not just Jeffersonian principles, they're actually New Hampshire principles as evidenced by our license plate, Live Free or Die, which has long standing. In 1788, a pastor from a church in Hampton Falls on the seacoast opened our general court with a rousing two-hour election day sermon, and where he discussed these very issues that we're discussing today. And of course, most of us know that the first Republic to declare independence from Great Britain was New Hampshire. And the first to sign the Constitution of the United States was New Hampshire. And I believe we have this historic moment right now to do that very same thing. And as I mentioned to you about the issue of this not just being Jeffersonian principles, all power residing originally in and being derived from the people all the magistrates and officers of the government are their sub substitutes and agents, at all times accountable to them. Government, therefore, should be open, accessible, accountable, and responsible. To that end, the public's right of access to governmental proceedings and records shall not be unreasonably restricted. And I'm sure that all of you here recognize that as the uh, Article 8, public's right to know. If you were to go further to Article 10 in our Bill of Rights in the New Hampshire Constitution, government being instituted for the common benefit, protection, and security of the whole community, and not for the private interest or emolument of any one man, family, or class of men, therefore, whenever the ends of government are perverted, 
and public liberty manifestly endangered and all other means of redress are ineffectual. The people may and of a right ought to reform the old or establish a new government. The doctrine of non-resistance against arbitrary power and oppression is absurd, slavish, and destructive of the good and happiness of mankind. That was written by people in New Hampshire representing us June 2nd, 1784. It's not just Jeffersonian principles, and if you spend any time in Washington, which I've spent quite a bit of time, we don't get the opportunity to do what we're doing here today. This is a wonderful principle in American government. We don't have that opportunity. There are people there that I'm convinced, as I've spent time with, they do not have a clue what we are dealing with here in New Hampshire. And we need to stand up for the things that are the principles of our founding in this sovereign state. And this is an opportunity to do that and do it in a meaningful way. And not to say that somebody else is going to do it some other time, but to do that now. And it is my great honor and blessing to be here before you today, and I certainly would be open to any of your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Any questions for Pastor Lynn? Uh, thank you. Uh, Pastor, you think uh, Washington, D.C., we can't in New Hampshire comply with 28A now in our own constitution. Do you think by us sending this resolution, we're going to be able to get federal government to comply? I believe that we start on the grassroots. I believe that that's the way our country was founded. I believe that it still works. I believe that that restoration, we obviously have a lot of things that are broken. Uh, for us to fix them is not to say there's nothing we can do about it. Uh, it's not from the top down, it's from the bottom up. And so this is a meaningful way of sending a notice. We are looking at what you're doing. We are watching what you're doing. We do not approve of some of the things you're doing. We expect you to keep your constitutional oath. We are not under any proviso to adjudicate or govern according to international law. Everyone is sitting in this room, as you well know, have taken an oath to uphold the constitution of this state. And of course, everyone from the dog catcher up uh, to uphold the constitution of the United States. We send this as a, a message. And incidentally, for all of you that know anything about what happened at the Battle of Lexington, April 19, 1775, and this is important, I think, to your question, Representative Baldessaro. Uh, before April 19, 1775, and that, that battle, an Olive Branch petition was sent in the previous October to the government that was our government in London at Parliament. You know what the answer was to the Olive Branch petition? 770 redcoats on April 19, 1775, and I'm not making that up. You can read it in the Declaration of American Independence. We are at a historic time in our country, very similar to what we faced at that particular time. We are under the mandate and challenge of the people of our country, many who do not understand these things. We have been the freest people in the history of the world. We have been the most prosperous people in the history of the world. This is vastly changing. Will not help anyone else in the world for us to lose the place that I believe the Lord has, has given us and as the people would expect for us as leaders. And so basically the answer to your question is, it may seem symbolic, but there are people there who will read this, they will listen, and even as Representative Itza pointed out, <coughs> and uh, the others have pointed out, I have myself been contacted from people all over this nation and some places in other parts of the world asking me about this. People are watching, and they're saying little New Hampshire might stand its ground and say proper role of government and people's lives and make some changes. Can we do it? I believe we can. Should we do it? I believe we should. Are there any other questions? Thank you very much, Pastor.